Good Thursday morning, St. Matthews. Let's have prayer. Turning in your prayer books to page 76. 76. And beginning under the heading Lent. Jesus said, If anyone come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now turning the page and over to page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now on page 80, continuing under the heading, The Inventory and Psalter. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. On the following page, page 81, under the heading, In Lent, the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, Come, let us adore him. Now, turning the page to page 82, and at the bottom of that page, let us say together in unison the Ubalate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our psalm that is appointed for this morning is Psalm 131. It's a short psalm. Psalm 131. Let us read this together in unison. O Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me. But I still my soul and make it quiet like a child upon its mother's breast. My soul is quieted within me. O Israel, wait upon the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now into our readings for this morning, Thursday of the fifth week of Lent. Our Old Testament reading is again from Exodus, chapter 7, verse 25, through chapter 8, verse 19. The book of Exodus, 7, 25 through 8, 19. Seven days passed after the Lord had struck the Nile, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will plague your whole country with frogs. The river shall swarm with frogs. They shall come up into your palace, into your bedchamber, and and your bed, and into your houses of your officials and of your people, and into your ovens, And your kneading bowls, the frogs shall come up on you and on your people and on all your officials. 
And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your staff over the rivers, the canals, and the pools, and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. But the, magi the magicians did the same by their secret arts and brought frogs up on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to the Lord to take away the frogs from me and my people, and I will let the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, Kindly tell me when I am to pray for you and for your officials and for your people that the frogs may be removed from you and your houses and be left only in the Nile. And he said, Tomorrow. Moses said, As you say, so that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs shall leave you and your houses and your officials and your people. They shall be left only in the Nile. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried out to the Lord concerning the frogs that, had brought, that God had brought upon Pharaoh. And the Lord did as Moses requested. The frogs died in the houses, the courtyards, and the fields, and they gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was a res respite, he hardened his heart and would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth so that it may become gnats throughout the whole land of Egypt. And they did so. Aaron stretched out his hand with his staffs, staff and struck the dust of the earth and gnats came on humans and animals alike all the dust of the earth turned into gnats throughout the whole land of Egypt the magicians tried to produce gnats but their secret arts with their secret arts but they could not they were gnats there were gnats on both humans and animals and the magician said to pharaoh this is the finger of god but Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. Here ends the reading. And now turning back into the daily office to page 85, page 85, we will read together the eighth canticle, the Song of Moses, Cantumus, Cant Cantemus Domino. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has, had hurled, has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you? glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders. You stretch forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in the plant and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord the sanctuary, O Lord, that you, your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now returning to our readings, our New Testament epistle is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. 2 Corinthians 3, 7 through 18. Now in the ministry of death, 
chiseled in letters on stone tablets, came in glory so that the people of Israel could not gaze at Moses' face because of the glory of his face, a glory now set aside, how much more will the ministry of the Spirit come in glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, much more does the ministry of justification abound in glory. Indeed, what once had glory has lost its glory because of the greater glory. For if what was set aside came through glory, much more has the permanent come in glory. Since then, we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Here ends the reading. And now we will turn again into the daily office. And turning the page, we will flip forward to page 94. Page 94. The Song of the Redeemed, Canticle 19. Magna et Mirabilia. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now, I will remain standing for the reading of our Gospel. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. Mark 10, 17 through 31. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible 
but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and, fo everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Here ends the gospel reading. And now turning back into the daily office to page 96, 96. Let us read together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The following page. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now turning the page to page 98, we will read together Suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. The collect for today is the collect from the fifth Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Continuing now in the office, let us turn to page 100. Page 100. A collect for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now a prayer for mission. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I now invite your intercessions, your thanksgivings, your requests, petitions.
we continue to pray for Mary, mother of Jenny. We pray also for Miles, Paul Marquise's son. We pray for Donald, our president, for Kay, our governor, for Paul, our mayor. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Key, our diocesan bishop, for Glenda, our bishop-elect, and for Father Steve and for Father Sam. Speaking of Father Sam, let us pray the prayer that he has given us for this time of Lent. I weave a silence. I weave a silence onto my lips. I weave a silence into my mind. I weave a silence within my heart. I close my ears to, dis to distractions. I close my eyes to attractions. I close my heart to temptations. Calm me, O Lord, as you still the storm. Still me, O Lord, to keep me from harm. Let all the tumult within me cease. Enfold me, Lord, in your peace. Amen. And now, continuing on page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, dear ones of St. Matthew's, I have learned just this afternoon as we are videoing Wednesday afternoon for Thursday morning, morning prayer that there may be a shelter-in-place order that is enacted as quickly as this evening. If that is so, I'm not sure what that means about our recorded and live streaming offerings of worship moving forward. But I can tell you this, that we will work diligently to continue having these offerings. So stay tuned. We will be emailing the, the parish with whatever or whatever we are able to decipher. So now, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I'll see you soon for prayer. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.